This is my favorite quay. So my friend, it's also he also uses my favorite flower. This quay is a lot. Have you ever tried this quay before? Yeah. Very nice, right? Can also the top thunder flavor. I don't exactly know what it is. I think it's cream. But I'm not very sure. It's like custard on top, right? Thunder flavor. Bottom is glutinous rice. See the tinge of blue? The tinge of blue comes from the butterfly tea flower. Okay, this is my favorite flower. It's, it's a bit like a weed. If you go outside the roadside, right, sometimes you see a lot of it crawling everywhere. It's a vine of some sort. It actually comes from the legume family, meaning it's a pea plant. Yeah? So, pea pods, right? You eat those green peas, it comes from the same family. Um, I have here, right, one of the pods of this group, a butterfly pea flower. Inside, you'll find the seeds. Okay? Uh, here, I would like to show you how vibrant the color can be when you extract out the dye from it. So this is what the blue really looks like when you extract out the pink part of the flower. Right? This water. <laughs> yeah? uh, water plus the pink one. Right? So beautiful, right? Uh, this is what they use in all the coloring. I want to show you a uh, magic, well, something I find quite magical about this particular yeah, it's quite amazing. Okay, so here I have the pigment inside the water from the butterfly tea. Here I have the lemon. See the color change? Yeah, peach, yeah? Yes, it's a pH indicator. This pigment from the butterfly tea flower is a pH indicator. In essence, it turns purple. If I put bleach inside, it will turn yellow. Yeah? So, um, recently, um, a lot of shops have been using this particular gimmick uh, in their drinks. They will serve you a blue colored drink, maybe a blue colored bubble tea. Then, after they give you a slice of lemon. Then, they say, just squeeze this lemon and watch magic happen. <laughs> yeah, so, this is the magic. This is the sign behind it. That means to say, if I take that quay, right? Then, I go and squeeze lemon out of the right? You see the color change also. Okay? So today I thought what would be more interesting is to see the flower clothes. Yesterday I felt like a like a drug dealer. I went to MRT, then I was waiting, right? Uh, walking around, pacing around. Then eventually the guy turned out, then I'm like, okay, just like some money, then you can pass it back. Then I ran off. Okay, so I got some flowers from the dude. He helped me from his garden uh, take out his blue key flowers. As fresh as it can be, like, okay? Okay, so I saved the precious for class. I just got this bunch yesterday. Alright? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay, so I'd like everyone to take a flower. Today, we are going to do a little dissection in class. This practical has been removed this year because of a lack of time. But I thought, okay, let's do it in class now. Okay, so I got some blue pea flowers. Butterfly pea, sorry, I keep saying blue pea. Butterfly pea. Everyone take one flower, and I'm going to show you a video to guide you how to dissect it. We did not bring scissors or pen knife. I found a way to dissect it with your fingernails. Okay? So you just have to use your fingernails. You just need some nail. Uh. Okay? Okay, so choose the flower of your choice. You can keep the petals afterwards if you want to extract out the dye. Very simple. Just wear a bit of water, then squeeze the petal, you can extract out the dye. Right? Okay, we're going to try to find all of these parts within the flower. And you'll see that it doesn't quite follow the model exactly. You know how I how I reacted to the word, the scientific word. Yeah. 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 Okay, so today we're going to find all these parts. <laughs> Once you get your flower, just observe it. Have a look. Find all the parts in one glance. Okay, don't pry open or tear it up. Just have a look. Can you find the parts? Yeah, I apologize if you advise if the flower may not be of the best quality. They tend to wilt after they've been plucked. Have you got flower? It's stuck on there, right? 
by two samples. Okay, now I'd like you to observe the petals. Do you observe nectar guides? See those lines there leading to the core of the flower? Those are nectar guides. Some of you have read all open the flower. Okay, before you start, ask yourself, right? Love me, love me not, right? Then you start. Yeah? Only one? Okay, how many petals are there? I'll let you count that in a while. Okay, the first petal we are going to encounter. Okay, the first petal we're going to encounter is the banner petal. That is the largest petal that you can find. Okay, so let's search for that the banner petal. Okay, the banner petal is that large petal. Okay, this is, these are all just petals, huh? That's easy. Once you go in, you will find two wing petals. They are both blue. Right, so two wing petals. Can you find that? I'd like you to peel them apart. If you like to, you can be like me. Arrange them in a concentric ring, like radius, like that, all the parts. The wing petals should be quite easy to pry all apart. Once you're done with the wing petals, you should find two white petals beneath there. And this is what Tishu was talking about. Two kilo petals. Yeah, and if you watch the video right now, there are two cube petals beneath the two wing petals. Okay, I'm going to pause on the screen so that you can see the two cube petals being pulled apart. Yeah, so that's where the cube petals are. Kind of looks like a lobster claw. Yeah, then you peel it apart. Okay, two cube petals. Once you're done, then you start finding the reproductive, the female and male reproductive organs. Oh, okay. Okay, and now comes the tough part. Let's go to the next layer. Okay, you think for yourself, well, after we go from the calyx to the corolla, should we encounter the male or female part first? Yeah? The male part is what we're going to find next. We're going to find the stamen's next. Stamen. The stamen is quite special. There are 10 stamens in total. Okay, there are 10 stamens. I have been observed very carefully. Wow, but these 10 stamens also be special. I don't know if you can find it. Is this a challenge? Huh? Nine of the stamens are fused. One stamen is separate. Yeah? Okay? This is really a challenge. Try fine. This is what you should get, huh? There is one stamen that is free. Nine stamens are fused together. Okay, this is a challenge. All the best. Sometimes the free stamen is somewhere somewhere around uh, because you accidentally tear it out. Okay, one free stamen. Okay, then the highlight, right? If you encounter the male part and the female part coming next, right? Where do you find the female part? Yeah, uh, some of you managed to pick it out already. I kid you not, it's really like a sushi roll, right? The stamens are like, it's like the seaweed wrapping around the rice, which is the female part. Okay, I use, I use my attachment microscope, and then up close you can see the enters. Then you see the filaments are fused to each other, nine of them fused to each other. And then there's this one free one. Okay, so ten in total. Now let's go to the female part, I'm going to teach you how to do it. This one is a bit tough. But some of you lucky or, or, or just by pure chance, right? you managed to take it out. Okay? The fused stamens, kind of like, you know, sushi, the seaweed part. Okay, so now you have to unravel it. You'll find, after you unravel the stamen, at the center you'll find the carpal. Okay, so you watch up close, I'm going to unravel. And then at the middle of it, yeah, at the middle of it, you see, can you see the, the couple? I just took out the couple. It's in the middle. So it's like a corn dog. You take out the flower part, the corn dog in the middle. 
okay? Then you have the female part. Okay? It is the purple. Notice it doesn't quite look like what's in your textbook? Yeah? Okay. okay. Where's the stigma? Ah, okay. Look very up close, huh? Now I use my microscope. Okay? Look at the stigma. Can you see that it's it has it's like hairy? Yeah? Then if I go down the stigma, that's the style. Okay, then the highlight of all this, huh? You go down the style, you encounter the ovary. But what's in the ovary? Ovules. Yeah. So, of course, I use my attachment. Now. I hold my slice to open the ovary. Inside, you find the ovules. Right? So, right now, if you have a pen knife, if you want to, and try to open it up, it's very tiny, but you find the ovules. Okay? I'll give you some time to explore. Hey, your finger all blue already. Oh, why is it blue? Imagine all the petals still attached, 
and this is the sigma. So left over sigma is style of the sigma. So I, I challenge you up. Now you go home, you see an apple, just flip it around, and find left over sigma. Okay? And then for your opening end, you can find left over sepals of petals. Okay? You think about the orientation of everything. Every fruit should have this. Right? You should find left over sigma, left over petals, and sepals on the opposite. eventually develop into the fruit and the seeds of the flower. Now we're going to go into some terminology, so I'd like to introduce you to so, the uh, One skill you need to go away with today is how to classify flowers and plants. Now, I'm going to introduce several words to you. After that, we're going to do a little brain teaser. Okay, number one, complete versus incomplete. Okay, there are several kinds of flowers, complete versus incomplete. A complete flower has all four rings or parts. Incomplete, just missing any of the rings or more. Okay? First thing up. Second, perfect versus imperfect. A flower is perfect if it has male and female parts. It is imperfect if it only contains either or. Yeah? So we are all imperfect. If we were flowers. Okay? So now a main teaser for you. To be perfect is to be complete. <laughs> True or false in the black kingdom? To be perfect is to be complete. True or false? Okay, think up. To be perfect, you must be complete. So the definition is, a complete flower is all four rings, all four parts. Huh? Perfect flower must have male and female parts. Let's just put on to the definition of it. So a perfect flower, to be perfect is to be complete. Is that true or false? Perfect is to be complete. True, false. false. You say it's true. Says it's false. So now we flip it around. Yeah. To be perfect is to be incomplete. Oh. Sorry, I just confused myself there. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to be perfect is to be complete. This statement is not true, right? Yeah. Why? I could have a flower with just the ovary, the stigma, the uh, and then, and the anthers. No petals, no sepals, right? So you need not be complete to be perfect. I'll show you a flower that looks like that. Look at this flower on the right hand side. It's called the powder puff tree. <laughs> okay? You only has, you see, no petals, no sepals, just the anthers just sticking out. Yeah? So this, yeah, okay? Oh, oh, but this is incomplete because it only has the outlet. It is incomplete. Does it have petals or sepals? Yeah? Okay, next brain teaser. Uh, incomplete flowers are imperfect. No. Okay, no. False. False. Incomplete flowers. Okay, incomplete flowers are imperfect. No, uh, okay. What are imperfect flowers? Incomplete? Yeah? Imperfect flowers are incomplete, right? Because imperfect flowers only contain the male or the female. So they're definitely incomplete. Okay, so, so this is how we will use these terms. If you look inside a, a botany book, you may see this flower is a complete Perfect flower. Uh, okay. 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 Okay.
When they sprout, you will see that sometimes the seed may emerge as one baby leaf come out or two baby leaves coming out. The one with two baby leaves is dicot, or in one baby leaf is monocot. In its adult form, there are some features you can use to identify whether it's a dicot or monocot. For example, an adult plant, the flower, parts can be in multiples of three if it's a, it's a monocot. If it's a dicot, the flower parts can be in multiples of four five. So, the butterfly key flower that you just encountered is a monocot or a dicot. Five petals, ten stamens. Uh, there was one banner, two wing, two keel. Right? So, dicot. That's how I would identify. Right? That's one skill to pick up. I, I'm just introducing all this. I, uh, I've not really tested this before. Huh? Right? But I appreciate it. If you ever read botany books, then it will make more sense. Yes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 15 petals. <laughs> yeah, someone asked me. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, what if he has 15 petals? That's the great question. And the next question I throw back to you is, how sure are you that the 15 petals belong to one flower? And not that there are multiple flowers bunched up together to look like one flower. Okay, uh, actually I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but from my experience, when I encounter flowers with a lot of petals, Observe carefully, actually, it's a bunch of flowers bunched together uh, to look like one flower. Yeah? Last one, monoaceous versus dioaceous. I'd like you to draw this diagram in your textbook. I think it'll help you out. Okay. The idea of a monoaceous plant versus a dioaceous plant. A monoaceous plant has Flowers that okay. A monoecious plant is a plant that contains both the male and female reproductive organs of the same plant. I can have two types, right? First one is I may have a flower that is perfect, meaning it contains male and female parts on the flower. Right? It's monoecious. A male and female perfect flower. Or I could have a plant where some flowers are male, some flowers female. It's also monoecious. Male, female, same plant. Dioecious plant is one where the male and female parts are actually on separate plants. Male and female. That's what dioecious is. Okay? So a great teaser for you. Monoecious plants always has perfect flowers. Yeah, think for yourself. No, think better. Everything I give you, I you will chop it and bash it in small pieces. That's why I remember we got kidney that. Yeah? Kidney became <laughs> many parts. Yeah, monoecious plants always have perfect flowers. Not flowers? Not necessarily, yeah. A plant with perfect flowers is always monoecious. Is that true or false? A plant with perfect flowers is always monoecious. Yeah. I just want to really think a little bit. Yeah? Plant with perfect flowers is always monoecious. So, the terminologies. You encounter this small in botany if you take it in university. Especially if you encounter real flowers, you're going to classify them. Uh, the next part of today is pollination. I believe that you've also encountered this before, and uh, I think a lot of it is quite logical. You can find a comparison table in your textbook. You find this table in your textbook. It compares insect pollinated flowers to wind pollinated flowers. Okay? You may want to start this. The skill to pick up here would be I may give you a diagram of a flower. 
Just you tell me if it's insect pollinator or wind pollinator. Actually, a lot of us have encountered flowers as of this uh, such uh, of various kinds of flowers. I think primary school you all got learned this about. Okay, so if you just look at this, right? Which flowers are insect pollinator? Which ones are wind pollinator? Okay, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. Which one, which one are insect, which one are wind?
just keep shuffling until we get the best end. Yeah. So is there a good thing about self-pollination? Yeah. If we have a good hand of poker cards, we self-shuffle, we still get a good hand, great, we can all survive well. We can all win the poker game. But it's not so good if that good hand suddenly becomes bad. Let's say the game of life suddenly the conditions change, everyone lose together. So in reality, we all look different because sexual reproduction uh, or cro and cross-pollination together introduces genetic variation. When we shuffle with another plant, there's a higher chance that everyone gets a different hand of the, of the plant. Everyone has a different chance to survive the poker game of life. And therefore, the advantages and disadvantages is quite similar to when you compare asexual and sexual reproduction. To end up today's lesson, look, you look at this, this kind of flower, right? Think about it. Bisexual flowers, therefore, should have a very, very high chance of going through self pollination. Right? Yet, they still exist. But a lot of plants want to have genetic variation. So, how? How can we overcome this? The insect crazy on this plant.
It's all meant to attract its pollinators, insects that lay their eggs on fresh carcasses. But the flowers? They're way down in here. Each of these is a male flower. And below are the female ones. With just hours to reproduce, the stakes are high for Titan Air. It would be easy if it could reproduce using its own pollen. But the plant needs fresh genetic material, pollen from other close flowers, to make these the fruit and seeds that eventually will become healthy new plants. So, it staggers things. The female flowers are ready first. They get sticky. The plant sends out its powerful stench, more than 30 chemicals in all. Some are nice. The spade releases a jasmine smell. But mostly, it smells like funky cheese, rotting garlic, dead rat in the wall. That aroma tricks flies to come investigate, thinking it might be a good spot for their young. And they might bring along pollen from another first flower. Brushing it on the female flowers. A few hours later, the male flowers release strings of pollen. Some of it falls on the female flowers, but by then, they're no longer able to use it, which is how the plant avoids pollinating itself. Titan Aram is rare. Poachers and deforestation in Sumatra, where it's from, have taken its hold. Like here at the University of California in Berkeley, there aren't any other Titan arrows in bloom to share pollen with. So when one opens up, biologists often collect pollen by hand to freeze and use later when another quartz flower is ready. Right? If not, that's all I have for today's lesson. I wish 